Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future of radio. Hey, I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Friday, November 27th, 2020, and we are live. How's everybody doing today? Hope you had a good holiday or Thanksgiving or Misgiving Day or whatever you celebrate. We did some uh, posts on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, on uh, Thursday, November 26, which nationally, traditionally is Thanksgiving, the fourth Thursday of uh, each no uh, of November, the fourth Thursday of November is celebrated as Thanksgiving uh, nationwide. And uh, Misgiving Day was, uh, uh, to my knowledge, that was a term coined by Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango. Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango wrote the book, The uh, African People and European Holidays and Mental Genocide, uh, book one and book two, okay? And uh, these two books that I have here that, that for those watching on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, African People and European Holidays and Mental Genocide by Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango. All right, so uh, on today's show, uh, you know, Wednesday, uh, our Wednesday show, I said that I would do a broadcast on Thursday dealing with the history of Thanksgiving, right? Well, Thursday came and went and I was, I, I've done the, you know, the presentations before, things like that. But Thursday came and went and um, I was, you know, reading and doing research and I was tired. It didn't happen Thursday. Okay. It just didn't happen Thursday. So if you look at Thursday and say, and said, oh, I missed it. No, you know, it, it, it ain't happening. Okay. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> All right. So um, we're doing it and I was going to do it earlier today, but it ain't happened earlier today either. So we're going to do it here. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a real history lesson on today's show. Everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. We're, we're broadcasting on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future radio, WFDF here in Detroit. Uh, so you can listen on your AM radio dial or you can download the iHeartRadio app, the iHeartRadio app and search for 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation. And you can listen to all the shows there. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, Michael Basin's on at uh, uh, 1 a.m. I think they have Michael Basin on 1 a.m. Uh, and then we're on Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time, the African History Network show. And we're still on Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've been in that time slot on Sundays for four years. OK, so we've been doing Monday through Friday here since uh, October 12, 2020. OK, so uh, on today's show, what we're going to deal with is we're going to deal with the real history of Thanksgiving the real history of Thanksgiving, but it's going to be from the Native American perspective. So usually when we hear the, the usually when we hear the history of Thanksgiving, it's from the perspective of the descendants of the winners. It's from the perspective of the descendants of Europeans. Usually we don't hear the history of Thanksgiving from the Native American perspective. Okay. Cause it, it was, it was downhill from there for, for Native Americans. All right. And also we're going to talk about the national day of mourning. OK, so we'll do with the real history of the first Thanksgiving from the Native American perspective, from the Native American perspective and the National Day of Mourning. So we post, you know, every Thanksgiving Day, we post articles dealing with the National Day of Mourning and the uh, commemorations that take place in Plymouth, Massachusetts, uh, that Native Americans hold. They don't celebrate Thanksgiving. They celebrate a National Day of Mourning. OK, not M-O-R-N-I-N-G morning like good morning no the national day of morning m-o-u-r-n-i-n-g okay at sadness all right so <laughs> we'll talk about that as well all right now um on the african history network show we focus on educating empowering and inspiring people of Af african descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's corrects wrong behavior what you do for yourself what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself what you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself what you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control, control the radius of a man's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his actions or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events and history, politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T. Uh, 
to sign up for our email newsletter, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828. Uh, to sign up for our email newsletter and also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, you can sign up for the email newsletter there as well. Uh, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, then also through PayPal, paypal.me uh, forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. All right. Uh, so let, let's look at um, some of this history. I'm first, we're, we're going to look at an article from um, this is from history.com, history.com. And I, I deal with this history uh, uh, each year. Uh, but this is a, a really good article from history.com dealing with the history of Thanksgiving. And this one is Thanksgiving 2020. Thanksgiving 2020. Uh, so Thanksgiving is a national holiday in the United States. Uh, and Thanksgiving 2020 uh, occurred on Thursday, November 26. Now, in 1621, in 1621, in Plymouth, uh, the, in 1621, the Plymouth colonists in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and the Wampanoag Native Americans shared an autumn harvest feast, an autumn harvest feast that is acknowledged today as one of the first Thanksgiving celebrations in the colonies. For more than two centuries, uh, days of Thanksgiving were celebrated by individual colonies and states. Now, it was not until 1863 uh, during the Civil War that President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a national Thanksgiving Day a national Thanksgiving day to be held each November. So that's Abraham Lincoln, 1863, during the Civil War, who proclaimed a national Thanksgiving day to be held each November. And, a, and, and that largely came from the activism of a woman named Sarah Josepha Hale. Sarah Josepha Hale, who went on a letter writing campaign and a national campaign uh, lobbying um, uh, people in the uh, Senate and the Congress, things like this, and the president to have a national day of thanks. Sarah Josepha Hale is also the woman who wrote the poem, Mary Had a Little Lamb. OK, so we go, we'll, we'll talk about her a little bit as well. So when we look at this background history uh, in September 1620. September 1620, a small ship called the Mayflower left Plymouth, England, Plymouth, England, carrying 102 passengers. There were 102 passengers plus 26 crewmen for a total of 128 people. OK, so there was an assortment of religious separatists seeking a new home where they could freely practice their faith. And there were other individuals who were lured, lured by the promise of prosperity and land ownership in the new world. They wanted to strike out and make a fortune. So everybody on the Mayflower was not seeking religious freedom. OK, some of them were seeking fame and fortune. All right. There was only about thirty five or thirty six of uh, the uh, only about thirty five or thirty six people on the Mayflower would uh be what we would consider the puritans okay uh and those like really seeking a um uh a religious freedom okay everybody wasn't doing that on, on the mayflower now after a treacherous and uncomfortable crossing that lasted 66 days they dropped anchor near the tip of uh cape cod far north of their intended destination at the mouth of the Hudson River. One month later, the Mayflower crossed Massachusetts Bay, uh, where the pilgrims, as they are now commonly known, as they are now commonly known, began the work of establishing a village at Plymouth. And so we already know you already have the Virginia colony at this point, 1607. And we already know August 20th, 1619 is already taking place. In, in Virginia, where you have uh, the 20 and odd Africans on the White Lion uh, pirate ship, the White Lion pirate ship. And these 20 and odd Africans are going to be uh, traded for food and water and supplies 
And um, when we hear this revisionist history, we're told this is when African people first came to this land. Now, we know even though that history did happen, uh, August 20th, 1619, okay, on that Dutch, it was a, it was a, um, it was, sorry, it was an English pirate ship because those Africans uh, originally, uh, 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 um, those Africans were uh, kidnapped from what we call present day Angola. Originally, it's about 350 of them. And um, it was uh, originally a, uh, um, the, the, the ship is going to be hijacked by the English. And they're going to be put on, it's about 50 Africans put on two uh, English pirate ships, the White Line and the Treasurer. Okay. And uh, the White Line and the Treasurer are going to come into uh, Virginia. And on August 20th, 1619, you have 20 and odd Africans who are going to be exchanged for food and water and supplies. OK, but African people had already been here going back tens of thousands of years. And you read the first Americans were Africans documented evidence by Dr. David M. Hotel. Uh, this book right here. OK, you read this book and uh, he deals with this history, the Khoisan, who have the oldest DNA on the planet and go all around the world. The Khoisan are the ancestors that I knew in the Twa. The Khoisan were here in the territory we today call South Carolina and Georgia going back uh, at least 51,700 years ago. OK, so um, we have to deal with a chronology of this history. His new book should be out in. Uh, either, I guess, December or January. I just interviewed him October 12th, and he's finishing up his, his new book, The First Americans Were Africans Revisited. Okay, so uh, we have to understand the chronology of this history as well. And also, uh, this is uh, Native American Heritage Day uh, also. So happy Native American Heritage Day. We did a Facebook post about that. The day after Thanksgiving is Native American Heritage Day. And this is also Native American Heritage Month as well. Okay. So, uh, we have 1619, 1620, 1621. Okay. Now, um, so after a treacherous and uncomfortable crossing that lasted 66 days, they dropped anchor near the tip of Cape Cod, uh, far north of their intended uh, destination at the mouth of the Hudson River. Uh, one month later, the Mayflower crossed Massachusetts Bay, where the pilgrims, as they are now commonly known, began the work of establishing a village at Plymouth. Now, throughout that first brutal winter, throughout that first brutal winter, brutal winter most of the colonists remained on board the ship where they suffered from exposure scurvy and outbreaks of contagious disease only half of the mayflower's original passengers and crew lived to see their first new england spring in march of 1621 march of 1621 the remaining settlers moved ashore where they received an astonishing visit from an Abenaki Native American who greeted them in English. An Abenaki Native American who greeted them in English. A B N A K I. Okay. And an Abenaki Native American who greeted them in English. Now, several days later, this Abenaki Native American would return with another Native American named Squanto. Squanto was a very, very important person in really the history of this country and when you deal with the um when you deal with the uh first what we call in our i in our mind and what's been told to us taught to us what we picture as the first thanksgiving in november 1621 squanto is um pivotal to the survival of the um pilgrims or the Europeans here in the, in that Plymouth colony. And, you know, the, um, how should I put this to be politically correct on radio? Um, if you did a poll of native Americans, those that have not been brainwashed by European society, because there were, um, there were native American schools where, uh, white people set up these schools for Native American children to go to to be educated in how to be white. 
in 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 um the carlisle school was like the most popular one so it, they were forbidden to speak their language there their hair was cut they wore western clothing they couldn't wear native american clothing so as long as you're not dealing with people who were descendants of, of like native americans who were europeanized if you did a poll of native americans who still hold on to their culture and have their names and speak their language they may want to do over i'm just saying you know they you know so uh <laughs> i think as politely as i can put it they may want to do over on some of this stuff right here but anyway um so squanto is going to teach these europeans how to grow corn and uh how to fish and how to survive okay um so the abenaki native american is going to return with another native american named squanto who was a member of the pawtuxet tribe p-a-w-t-u-x-e-t the pawtuxet tribe who had been kidnapped by an english sea captain and sold into slavery before escaping to london and returning to his homeland on an exploratory expedition okay so squanto was one so you're gonna when you study this history you're gonna have native americans who are captured from this land here and enslaved and taken into england that's going to happen also you're going to have africans who are captured from africa and brought to this land and um some are taken into the caribbean first for the seasoning plantations they're taken in the caribbean first then brought here you're going to have some that come straight here uh some africans but you're going to also have native americans who are captured from here and taken into england uh because this was the english colony okay the the, the 13 colonies these were english colonies you can also have some african people who were captured you're going to have some moors who, who those who may classify as moors but they're african people as well they're going to be captured from here and taken into England. So is it the, the, the mistake that the mistake that people make oftentimes and we come. OK, we're coming up on the break. How much time before the break, Mike? Um, the mistake that people make. Oh, OK, one minute before the break. The mistake that people make is they think they look at the history linear and it, it, and they think it just happened one way. No, it didn't just happen one way. You have people being captured from here taken into england taken into europe um uh and you, when you, you're gonna have the you, you have a, what's happening with the dutch you have it happening with spanish with the spanish coming here as well um and you also even before um 1620 or, or 1620 1620 1621 with uh the mayflower before that the spanish are here in this land in 1526 in the territory that's south carolina georgia they're taking africans in to that territory in 1526 and those africans are going to overthrow them and, and basically disappear but that's 1526 so you have different things that are going to happen you know largely at the same time it's not just one way that we're taught to think of this history all right you listen to the african history network show right here on 9 10 a.m superstation the future radio on michael m hotel we'll be back in a few minutes all right stand by everybody all right stand by how's everybody doing share this broadcasting and social media platforms invite your friends to tune in also if you like this type of information you could donate to the african history network dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app also through paypal um paypal.me forward slash the ahn show and uh also through our uh, at our website africanhistorynetwork.com stand by one commercial break we'll be back in a few minutes here stand by all right How's everybody doing? Hope you had a safe holiday. All right, just a second. Let me bring up this uh, presentation here.
Let me look at this just a minute here. All right, we're back from break in one minute. Stand by. All right, and also African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. And uh, email us at customer service at African History Network.com. Customer service at African History Network.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Okay. All right, everybody, stand by. Let's see. We have Yousef. Uh, we have Yousef. We have uh, Donna, Erica, Willie, Swollen, uh, Nini, 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 Ronnie, Jamal. Just a few of the people watching. All right, we're about to come back from the break. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Superstation of Future Radio. Hey, I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Friday, November 27th, 2020. We are live. Hope everybody's doing well. Everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. We're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. Also, my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. And then we're broadcasting on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation's um, um, Facebook fan page as well. Uh, and then you can listen to uh, these shows on iHeartRadio. You can listen live to 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF here in Detroit. So you can listen on your AM radio or you can listen um, by downloading the iHeartRadio app and searching for 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. OK. And then also uh, on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your wherever you get your audio podcast from, search for the African History uh, Network show, the African History Network show, because we have a uh, page there on iHeartRadio and Stitcher and iTunes. And uh, you can listen to our audio podcast of our shows there. Uh, you can download the shows also. OK. All right. So let's go back to this uh, history lesson. We're dealing with the. Uh, real history of uh, Thanksgiving, the real history of Thanksgiving from the Native American perspective and a national day of mourning. The real history of Thanksgiving from uh, the Native American perspective and uh, the national day of mourning. All right. And we know also that this is Nash. This is uh, Native American Heritage Month, Native American Heritage Month. Uh, and this is uh, the day after Thanksgiving is also Native American Heritage Day. All right. So happy Native American Heritage Day. And in many cases, that applies to some African-Americans because some of us have Native American ancestry. I'm one of them, Cherokee and Blackfoot on my mother's side of the family. My mother's from Tennessee. So there's a deep history there. Uh, unfortunately, when we talk about African-Americans, too many of us just think of slave history. And that's a misunderstanding of history. OK, so let's continue. All right. Uh, so you're going to have uh, a Native American uh, named Squanto, who was a member of the Pawtuxet Native American tribe. He had been kidnapped by an English sea captain and sold into slavery before escaping to London and returning to his homeland on the exploratory expedition. Now, Squanto was going to teach these Europeans in Plymouth the, the, what we know as pilgrims. He's going to. Um, uh, teach them how to cultivate corn, how to extract uh, sap from maple trees, how to catch fish in the rivers and avoid poisonous plants. Um, so the, the these Europeans had been weakened by malnutrition and illness. Half of them who originally made the voyage are going to die over that uh, over that winter going into the spring of 1621. Now. Um, so Squanto also helped the settlers forge an alliance with the Wampanoag Nation of Native Americans, which was a local Native American nation there or what we call a tribe. OK, so he's going to uh, Squanto, who was Pawtuxet, uh, the Pawtuxet Native American nation. He's going to uh, help these settlers forge an alliance. It was actually like a treaty. 
uh, with the Wampanoag uh, Native American nation. And uh, that alliance would endure for more than 50 years and uh, remains as one of the sole examples of harmony between European colonists and Native Americans. OK, because be quite honest with you, it it all it all is pretty much going to go downhill when Europeans come here. I'm just you know, I don't mean to be an. It is, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's pretty much going to go downhill. OK, it. Um, yeah, so when I hear people talk about make America great again, I'm like, uh, mm, you sure about that? <laughs> you know, I mean, um, it, when I hear, okay, so what I say may go outside the circumference of some people's awareness, just because you never heard it before, disagree with it, don't like it, does not mean it's not true. It just means you have to do some research to understand what I'm talking about. OK, so when I hear people talk about make America great again. I have to ask the question, OK, um, what period of time of history are you talking about? Because I can talk about some history when it was great. But that's before this happened. So what part of, what, what period of time of history are you talking about? OK, um. All right. Anyway. OK. <laughs> so in November 1621. In November 1621, after the pilgrims first corn harvest proved successful, Governor William Bradford organized a celebratory feast and invited a group of the fledgling colonies, Native American allies, including the Wampanoag chief Massasoit. OK, so Massasoit is the was the chief of the Wampanoag Nation. And when you study the National Day of Mourning that takes place in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the name they usually hold or at, at some point they're going to have that uh, commemoration at a statue of Massasoit. OK, the Wampanoag Nation chief. All right. Now, so this November 1621 um celebratory feast is remembered as america's quote unquote quote unquote first thanksgiving is remembered as america's quote unquote first thanksgiving and if we if we turn on the screen share so those watching on our facebook fan page the african history network the african history network and our youtube channel michael m hotel uh you can see this and if you're listening to 9 10 a.m superstation wfdf you can still listen to the radio, but you can uh, log on and um, on Facebook and you can you can see us as well. OK, so you keep listening to 910. Keep listening to the radio, but you can um, watch us here and just turn down the volume on the computer um, for uh, Facebook and YouTube. But if we look at the painting, OK, this painting that has been shown to us as the uh, first um as the the first thing get for what we know as the first thanksgiving right this is uh this happened but the way it happened is not what we have been taught okay you see the white people bringing food to the native americans and they're there in harmony they they the native americans did eat with them but that, they weren't invited originally. That's not what happened. OK. All right. We're going to get to we're going to get to that here in just a minute. All right. So let's continue here. So um, that painting that we see uh, depicting the feast in 1621, that's what we have been taught of as America's first Thanksgiving. Although the pilgrims themselves may not have used the term Thanksgiving at the time, the festival lasted for three days, okay? There's gonna be a three day festival that they're gonna have. Now, while no record exists of the first Thanksgiving exact menu, much of what we know about what happened at the first Thanksgiving comes from Pilgrim Chronicler Edward Winslow, Pilgrim chronicler edward winslow who wrote quote our harvest being being gotten in 
our governor sent four men on fouling. OK, search, uh, um, searching the hunt for pheasants, uh, birds, uh, four men on fouling that so we might after a special manner rejoice together after we had gathered the uh, the fruits of our labors. They four F O U R they four in one day killed as much fowl as with a little help beside served the company almost a week at which time amongst other recreations we exercised our arms firearms so shooting firearms we exercised our arms many of the Indians coming amongst us and amongst the rest their greatest king Massasoit with some 90 men their greatest king Massasoit with some 90 men whom for three days we entertained and feasted and they went out and killed five deer or what they would refer to as venison v-e-n-i-s-o-n venison which they brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor and upon the captain and others and although it be not always so plentiful as it was at this time with us Yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often wish you partakers of our plenty, that we often wish you partakers of our of our plenty, end quote. Now, historians have suggested that many of the dishes uh, were likely prepared using traditional Native American spices and cooking methods because the pilgrims had no oven and the Mayflower's sugar supply had dwindled by the fall of 1621, the meal did not feature pies, cakes, or other, uh, or other desserts, uh, which have become a hallmark of contemporary celebrations. Now, um, pilgrims held their second Thanksgiving celebration in 1623 to mark the end of a long drought that had happened uh, the years that that had threatened the year's harvest and prompted governor bradford to call for a relief a, a religious fast days of fasting and thanksgiving on an annual or occasional basis became common practice in other new england settlements uh as well okay now during the american revolution continental congress the continental congress designated one or more days of thanksgiving a year during the american revolution which is 1775 to 1783 of uh, the continental congress designated one or more days of thanksgiving a year and in 1789 george washington issued the first thanksgiving proclamation by the national government of the united states okay but this was not a annual thanksgiving OK, this, at this point, it's not going to be an annual Thanksgiving. That's going to come in 1863. Now, in uh, in this proclamation of a national uh, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, George Washington called upon Americans to express their gratitude for the happy conclusion to the country's war, uh, the war, the country's war of independence and the successful ratification of the U.S. Constitution, which is going to be ratified in, in 1789. OK, his successor, John Adams, who was the second president, John Adams and James Madison also designated days of things during their uh, presidencies. Now, in 1817, New York became the first of several states to officially adopt an annual Thanksgiving holiday. OK, 1817, New York, each celebrated it on a different day, however, and the American South remained largely unfamiliar with the tradition. In 1827, the noted magazine editor and prolific writer Sarah Josepha Hale, H-A-L-E, uh, Sarah Josepha Hale, uh, who is an author, uh, and she is the woman who wrote the nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Sarah Josepha Hale launched a campaign to establish Thanksgiving as a national holiday. So what happened was she read writings about what we have been taught to think of as the first Thanksgiving in 1621. She read writings about that, was inspired by that to have a national day of thanks. So she spent 36 years on this crusade to get a national day of thanks. 
OK. And for 36 years, she published numerous editorials and sent um, scores of letters to governors, senators, uh, presidents and other politicians, earning her the nickname, the mother of Thanksgiving. And actually, let me see here. We have. Um, if I pull up the we go to the slide, uh, we go to the slide presentation. We'll show you a picture here. Sarah Josepha Hill as well. So those watching uh, on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, and on YouTube, you can see this. If you're watching on that 10 a.m. Superstation, that's fine. You can go back and watch this later. That's fine. Keep listening to the radio. Um, let me see. Let's flip over to the slide here. Should be able to see this. All right, just a second here. Okay, so here is a, a painting of Sarah Josepha Hale. Uh, in 1827, she starts a campaign to get politicians to have a national day of, day of thanks, all right? All right, now Abraham Lincoln finally heeded her request in 1863. Uh, at the height of the Civil War and uh, in a proclamation uh, entreating all Americans to ask God to commend, uh, to ask God to uh, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers uh, in the lamentable civil strife, okay? Um, Abraham Lincoln in 1863, uh, at the height of the civil war in a proclamation entreating all Americans to ask God to quote, commend to his tender care, all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife end quote, and to quote, heal the wounds of the nation, heal the wounds of the nation end quote. So this is during. The Civil War was 1861 to 1865. So Abraham Lincoln um, scheduled Thanksgiving for the final Thursday in November, and it was celebrated on that day every year until 1939, every year until 1939. Now, um, in 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, during the Great Depression, moved the holiday up one week in an attempt to spur, spur retail sales during the Great Depression. Roosevelt's plan, known derisively as Frank's Giving, was met with passionate opposition, and in 1941, uh, President Roosevelt reluctantly, reluctantly signed a bill making Thanksgiving the fourth Thursday in November, the fourth Thursday in November. When it was um, celebrated, um, uh, originally during the Civil War, it's going to be October 1863. October 1863 uh, is when you're going to have this National Day of Thanks that uh, coming from a proclamation from uh, Abraham Lincoln. OK, so we go from November 1621 with what we've been taught was the first Thanksgiving in Plymouth, uh, Massachusetts. We go to uh, a, a, a day of thanks under George Washington, we go to New York, uh, 1817, New York becoming the first of several states to officially adopt the annual Thanksgiving holiday. We go to 1827, Sarah Josepha Hale and starting this 36 year campaign to have a National Day of Thanks. We go to October 1863 with the National Day of Thanks during the Civil War. We go to 39, 1939, President Roosevelt uh, moving Thanksgiving one Thursday earlier to give more time for shoppers before Christmas. OK, and then we go to 1941, uh, President Roosevelt signing a bill to make Thanksgiving the fourth Thursday in November. All right. Now, if we look at the so check out this article here from history.com history.com which is the official website of the history channel there's more there to read thanksgiving 2020 this gives 
um, some of the history of Thanksgiving and uh, some of the Thanksgiving traditions like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and uh, different things like that. OK, so you can uh, check that out. We'll post the link here on the thread of the broadcast. If we look at the Native American perspective of what happened. OK, we talked a little bit about the Wampanoag Nation and uh, Massasoit, the Wampanoag chief. And we talk about Squanto, who was instrumental to saving uh, these Europeans. And, you know, once again, we got asked the question, you talk about make America great again. We have to ask, okay, what period of time are you talking about? America was great. I can think of some I can think of, uh, I can think of some periods of time when this land here was great. Now, it, it, this is before 1620. This is before 1607. Uh, so, um, you know, it is what it is. If we look at this article here from Indian Country Today, Indian Country Today, which is a Native American publication. It's uh, entitled, What Really Happened at the First Thanksgiving? What Really Happened at the First Thanksgiving? The Wampanoag side of the tail the wampanoag side of the tail um and you know one when you had um when trump was given a campaign rally and uh it was either south dakota or north dakota he was on sacred native american land and he did not have permission to be on that land okay you go back and uh there were stories about this i remember msnbc was there covering this and he was in violation of treaties, OK, because based upon the treaties, they have to get uh, American people who are not of that Native American nation had to get permission from the Native American nation to be on that land. So he's in violation of the treaties, but they don't some of the, some of them don't care about treaties. OK, um, and I remember um, the the uh, on MSNBC, the reporter's name is Shaquille. Shaquille Brewster, I think is his last name. Um, he said that you had Trump supporters who were saying that uh, something that felt like those Native Americans were lying or something like that about the treaties. He's, and he said that this history is not taught in schools. OK, this history is not taught in schools. So uh, a lot of people don't know that history of the land and how the land was stolen from native americans etc all right yeah shaquille brewster is his name uh msnbc okay so if we look at this um this article it, it's a, it's an interview with um someone with the wampanoag nation okay and it starts out saying when you hear about the pilgrims and the indians harmoniously sharing the first thanksgiving meal in 1621 the indians referred to uh the, the indians referred to so generically are the ancestors of the contemporary members of the wampanoag nation as as the story commonly goes the pilgrims who sailed from england they sailed from plymouth england OK, and that's why you have a Plymouth, Massachusetts. They sail from Plymouth, England. The um, the pilgrims who sailed from. Let me blow this up here. OK, the uh, pilgrims who sailed from uh, Plymouth, England on the Mayflower and landed at what became Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620, had a good harvest the next year. So Plymouth Governor William Bradford organized a feast to celebrate the harvest and invited a group of Native American allies, including the Wampanoag chief Massasoit, to the party. OK, the feast lasted three days. And according to chronicler Edward Winslow, um, Edward Rins Winslow, Governor Bradford sent four men on a fowling mission to prepare for the feast. And the Wampanoag uh, guests brought five deer to the party. And ever since then, the story goes, Americans have celebrated Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of November. Not exactly. Ramona Peters, the, Ma the Mashpee Wampanoag tribes, tribal historic preservation officer, told Indian Indian Country. OK, Indian Country Today Media Network in a conversation on the day before Thanksgiving in 2012 which was 391 years since that mythological first Thanksgiving. So that, that first Thanksgiving 
that that uh, that painting that we see even though native americans did eat with the settlers how it has been taught to us is mythological that's not how it happened okay so what we know what, what we know what we're taught so the question that's being asked is we know what uh we're taught in mainstream media and in schools is made up what's the wapanog version of what happened so ramona peter said yeah it was made up it was abraham lincoln who used the theme of pilgrims and indians eating happily together he was trying to calm things down during the civil war when people were divided it was like a nice unity story okay um so she's asked the question so it was a political thing ramona peters says yes it was public relations it's kind of genius in a way to get people to sit down and eat dinner together families were divided during the civil war all right you have the, you have the 11 states seceding from the union going to war with the union uh you have uh, uh about 620,000 people die uh in, in the civil war so yeah you had uh, sometimes you hear them say it was a nation against itself, brother against brother, brother against brother, etc. So what really happened with what we are told was the first Thanksgiving in November 1621? She said, we made a treaty. The leader of our nation at the time, Yellow Feather uh, uh, OS, uh, Os McQuinn Massasoit, Okay, Yellow Feather Os McQuinn Massasoit, O A S M E E Q U I N, made a treaty with John Carver, John Carver, the first governor of the Plymouth Colony. They elected an official, uh, they, they elected an official while they were still on the boat, okay, on the Mayflower. They, they had their charter, they were still under the jurisdiction of the King of England. At least that's what they told us. OK, so you had the um, uh, that was the Plymouth Trading Company, if I remember correctly. They had to get the charters were given by the King of England for like the London Trading Company and the Plymouth Trading Company to voyage out. OK, and set up these colonies. OK, so they could not. Uh, so they couldn't make a treaty for a boatload of people. So they made a treaty between the two nations, England and the Wampanoag nation. OK. Um, so it, it so the treaty basically said that the Wampanoag nation would let the settlers be there on the Wampanoag land and we would protect them against any enemies and they would protect us from any of ours any of our enemies okay so it was basically an agreement to you watch our back we'll watch yours all right uh the 2011 native american coin native american one dollar coin commemorates the 1621 treaty between the wapanoag nation and the pilgrims of the plymouth colony OK, there's a 2011 Native American one dollar coin that commemorates this 1621 treaty. And, you know, you may have some people that may want to some Native Americans that may want to do a do over. And I can't say I blame them. Well, you know, this is pretty much downhill from from here. So. Uh, so it was basically an I'll watch your back. You'll watch mine agreement later on we collaborated on jurisdictions and creating a system so that we could live together okay now uh, what so what's the uh wampanoag version of the 1621 meal okay uh that they had there november 16 that they ate there november 1621 you've probably heard the story of how squanto who was paul tuxet how Squanto assisted in their planting of corn. So this was their first successful harvest and they were celebrating the harvest and planning a day of their own Thanksgiving. And it's kind of like what some of the Arab nations do when they celebrate by shooting guns in the air. So this is what was going on over in Plymouth, the, in the Plymouth colony, 
the the settlers are having this three day feast and they're shooting guns off in the air as uh edward winslow chronicle okay what happens is the the wapanog nation they hear this shooting going on they don't know a feast is going is taking place so massa so it the wapanog chief rounds up 90 of his warriors and they go to see what's taking place what's happening because they have this treaty and they hear shooting so they they're trying to find out what's going on all right so massasoit gathered up 90 warriors and showed up at uh plymouth prepared to engage they're prepared to go to war to protect the settlers and uh, some people you know may want to do a do-over on this one here but you know hey um so if that was uh so they're trying to find out what's going on in case there's a war taking place or the settlers are being attacked now if they were uh so they didn't know and it was a fact-finding mission they didn't know what was happening and it was a fact-finding mission so when massasoit and the 90 warriors of the wapanong nation arrive it's explained through a translator that they were celebrating the harvest this the settlers in plymouth the plymouth colony were celebrating the harvest so we decided to stay and make sure that was true the wapanog native americans are going to stay and and to to find out if this is really what's taking place okay um because uh they had seen in other landings like captain john smith and even the vikings uh had had been there as well so they wanted to make sure uh that everything was on the up and up okay so they stayed so there are 90 men who th there are 90 men there and at the time um they think that th there were only about 23 survivors of uh the uh, of the mayflower ship at this time november 1621 okay so she said so you can imagine the fear uh you have armed natives who are camping nearby armed native americans who are camping nearby uh and then you have the uh the colonists who are always uh vulnerable uh to the new land new creatures even trees uh there were there were no such trees in England at the time. And, and one of the things Squanto was going to do is uh, teach them uh, which plants not to eat because they're poisonous as well. So um, she went on to say people forget that they had just landed, landed here. And this coastline looked very different from what it looks like now and their culture uh new foods they were afraid to eat a lot of things uh so they were very vulnerable and we did protect them the wapanog nation did protect these settlers uh not just support them we protected them you can see throughout their journals that there were always that they were always nervous and unfortunately when they were nervous they were very aggressive okay so the next question she was asked was so the pilgrims did not invite the wapanog to sit down and eat turkey and drink some beer okay so that that's even though we see that that painting from 1621 it's really a misrepresentation of what happened okay um she said people did eat together but not in what is portrayed as the first thanksgiving it was our homeland and our territory and we walked all through uh all through uh their villages all the time it was our homeland and our territory and we walked all through their villages all the time uh the the um the other villages of the, of the plymouth colony of the settlers the difference in how they behaved how they ate how they prepared things was a lot for both cultures to work with each other but in those days it was sort of like today when you go out on a boat in the open sea and you see another boat and everyone is waving and very friendly it's because they're uh they're vulnerable and need to rely on each other if something happens in those days the english really needed to rely on us and yes they were polite 
they, they were polite as best they could be, but they regarded us as savages nonetheless. And when you read some of the writings from some of the Plymouth colonists, they refer to the Native Americans as savages. They really don't have a lot of good things to say about them. OK, so um, did you eat together? Some so the question was asked, did you eat together sometimes, but but not at the legendary Thanksgiving meal? Uh, no, we were there for no, we were there for days. And this is another thing. We give thanks more than once a year in formal ceremony for different see uh, for uh, for different seasons uh, for the green corn Thanksgiving, for the arrival of certain uh, fish species, whales, the first snow our new year in May, there are so many ceremonies and I think most cultures have similar traditions. So she's saying it, from the Native American culture, they didn't just have one day of thanks. They have different, they have different celebrations of thanks. Okay. All right. We're going to continue this discussion on our social media platforms. We'll continue this broadcast, the African history network on Facebook and Michael M. Hotep on YouTube. Donate to the African history network, dollar sign, the AHN show through cash app. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App and also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Right now, it's correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. Uh, we'll talk to you Sunday night. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. All right, stand by, everybody. All right, stand by, everybody. Okay, let's continue here. All right, so we do an hour on 9 10, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m., 12 midnight, and then Sundays. We're on for two hours, nine, uh, nine, we'll do 11 p.m. to 12 midnight, Monday through Friday, and then Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. All right, how's everybody doing? You can, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, and then also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, and then uh, also through, um, uh at our website africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com okay all right let's continue here and all of my dvd lectures are at our website africanhistorynetwork.com as well and we have digital downloads there also um you can advertise with the african history network we have a special promotion going on right now for a couple more days uh email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com African American business owners post name your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Okay. Well, and um, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Well, we create a video commercial for you and an audio commercial. Okay. No additional charge. And we air your video commercial uh, when we rebroadcast these shows on our social media platforms. And your audio commercial plays in the audio podcast of our shows also. All right. Let's continue here. All right stand by okay all right so the when you study native american culture as well as as well as well as different african cultures okay we had numerous days of thanks and native americans had numerous days of thanks they didn't just have one day of thanks all right that's something coming from we see this like in american culture this one big day of thanks all right uh so they're gonna have uh various days of thanks for uh the different seasons for the green corn they have uh, the green corn thanksgiving for the arrival of certain fish species whales the first snow the new year in may etc all right now um the question was asked what are the mashpee wapanog native americans taught about thanksgiving today what are the mashpee wapanog uh, Native Americans taught about Thanksgiving today. Okay. Uh, so Ramona, uh, Ramona Peters said, who is the mash P Wapanog tribes, tribal historic preservation officer. Um, she said, most of us are taught about the friendly Indians and the friendly pilgrims and people sitting down and eating together. They really don't go into any depth about that time period and what was going on in 1620. It was a whole different mindset. There was always uh, uh, there. Uh, there was always focus on food because people had to work hard to go out and forage for food. Not the way it is now. 
I can remember being in, being in Oklahoma amongst a lot of uh, different tribal people when I was in junior college and Thanksgiving was coming around and I couldn't come home. It was too far and too expensive. And people were talking about Thanksgiving and yeah, the Indians. And I said, yeah, we're the Wapanogs. They didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know what the Wapanogs, who the Wapanogs were. She said, we're not, we're not even taught what kind of Indians uh, helped the, or, or protected the pilgrims. In school, they just taught Indians. They're not even taught which Native American nation it was. So hopefully, she said, hopefully in the future, at least for Americans, we do need to get a lot brighter about other people. So the next question was asked. So basically today, the Wampanoag celebrate Thanksgiving the way Americans celebrated or celebrated as Americans. And uh, Ramona, Ramona Peters said, yes, but there's another element to this that needs to be noted as well. The Puritans believed in Jehovah and they listened to uh, they listened for Jehovah's directions on a daily basis and trying to figure out what would please their God. So for Americans, for the most part, there's a Christian element to Thanksgiving. So formal prayer and some families will go around the table and ask, what are you thankful for this year? In Mash P. Wapanog families, we make offerings of tobacco. For traditionalists, for traditionalists, we give thanks to our first mother, our human mother, and to Mother Earth. Okay, for traditionalists, we give thanks to our first mother, our human mother, and to Mother Earth. Then, because there's no real time, uh, there's, there's no the, there's no real time uh, to it. You embrace your thanks in passing them into the tobacco without necessarily speaking out loud, but to actually give your mind and spirit together, thankful for so many things. Unfortunately, because we're trapped in this cash economy, this this cash economy and this nine to five schedule, we can't spend the normal amount of time on ceremonies, which would last four days for a proper Thanksgiving. All right. So uh, she was asked a question. Do you regard Thanksgiving as a positive thing? Do you regard Thanksgiving as a positive thing? As a concept, a heartfelt Thanksgiving is very important to me as a person. It's important that we give thanks. For me, it's a state of being. You want to live in a state of Thanksgiving, meaning that you use the creativity that the creator gave you. You use your talents. You find out what those are and you cultivate them. And that gives and that gives thanks in action. And when we look at Native, when we look at African Americans celebrating Thanksgiving, right? So some, you know, African Americans get beat up for se uh, celebrating Thanksgiving, and uh, but we, I think it's important to understand that usually when African Americans celebrate Thanksgiving, right, it's not that they are condoning the genocide inflicted upon Native Americans. It's not that they necessarily um buy into the concept of what has been promoted to us as the first thanksgiving all right the, um when african americans tend to celebrate thanksgiving we're thankful that we have a roof over our head we're thankful for our family thankful for our health things like this so uh, uh, oftentimes it's even though they may have turkey and cranberry sauce and things like this, it's it's somewhat separate from the European version of Thanksgiving. And we're focused on being with family. We're focused on being together, um, thankful for our blessings, thankful, thankful for that we have food on the table, th especially this year. This year has been crazy, you know. Uh, now, unfortunately, 
it's dangerous to celebrate Thanksgiving going over other people's houses, going over family houses. That's dangerous. And the CDC uh, was recommending not to do that, especially not traveling. Now, the, a lot of people didn't pay attention to the CDC because you had uh, basically almost like 3.9 million people who traveled Friday through uh, that, that Friday through Sunday uh, before Thanksgiving uh, going through TSA. OK, and you're going to see a huge because because of this and what's going on right now. And we know today um, the U.S. had 200,000 cases of coronavirus first time in history, uh, 200,000 cases of coronavirus. So uh, we've had, I think, 22, 23 straight days of 100,000. Uh, new cases or more a day. So you're about to see this whole thing explode with coronavirus, unfortunately. And a lot of people were not heeding the warnings from the CDC about traveling for uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, it's going to be, unfortunately, it's going to be a lot of people who ain't going to be here for Christmas. Yeah, the people ain't want to listen. Uh, so, okay. Uh, um, you, you've heard me warn people about this, all right. But uh, this is what's happening. U.S. report, uh, U.S. reports record two hundred thousand coronavirus cases in a single day. Bloomberg uh, reported, and um, we see that um, we we had thirteen million uh, cases in the U.S. of uh, of coronavirus, and also, we see that um, you see the, the the traveling during for Thanksgiving is really going to help this spread. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve was the busiest air travel day of the pandemic, despite health warnings. Washington Post is reporting it was the third time in one week that the Transportation Security Administration (TSA) reported screening more than one million people, day, one million daily passengers. A now rare, a now rare milestone for airports. Okay, uh, so we can check this out from uh, the Washington Post. Thanksgiving Eve was the busiest air travel day of the pandemic, despite health warnings. Um, so, you know, it, 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 some people ain't gonna have a good Christmas. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay, all right, but let's continue here. We posted the link here on the thread of the broadcast of that article from the Washington Post. All right. So um, the next question was, and will your family do something for Thanksgiving? Uh, Ramona Peters said, yes, we'll do the rounds. Make sure we contact family members, eat with friends, and then we'll all celebrate on Saturday at the social at the social and dance together with the drum. All right. So this story was originally published November 23rd, 2012 for um, Indian Country Today uh, Media Network. Indian Country Today Media Network is at IndianCountryToday.com. What really happened at the first Thanksgiving, the Wampanoag side of the tale? What really happened at the first Thanksgiving, the Wampanoag side of the tale? Now, when we look at the National Day of Mourning, OK, uh, I posted a few articles dealing with this on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. And how's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms. OK, follow us at our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network. And on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P uh, on YouTube. OK, and turn on notifications so you know when we go live as well. So subscribe and then turn on notifications so you know when we go live. I posted an article from uh, Newsweek.com dealing with the National Day of Mourning. OK, uh, 400 years after first Thanksgiving, Native Americans honor Day of Mourning instead. So 1621 to uh, well, 2020, but 1620 when the um who we call the pilgrims come here 1620 to 2020 all right so 50 years ago native american um native american wamsutta frank james w-a-m-s-u-t-t-a -T -T -A, wamsutta frank james was asked to participate in a statewide celebration of the 350th anniversary of the arrival of the mayflower in massachusetts 
okay so Wamsetta Frank James who was the president of the Federal Eastern Indian League was asked to give a speech in some form thanking the pilgrims for quote bringing civilization to the shores okay see this is this is just insensitive that's that's just yeah she they actually asked him this okay what uh he was the president of the of the federated eastern indian league and he was asked to give a speech uh in some form thanking the pilgrims for quote bringing civilization to the shores end quote so the organizers asked wamsada to submit a copy of his speech beforehand citing grammar and spelling concerns wamsada frank james who was the president of the federated eastern indian league at the time was a school teacher uh at, at that at that time 50 years ago but he obliged he was a school teacher at the time but he obliged however his speech was shut down and deemed inflammatory i wonder what he said that was inflammatory the sequence of event this sequence of events is what would lead to the inception of the national day of mourning the national day of mourning a day for indigenous people peoples uh, from around north and south america to come together and remember their ancestors who were killed at the hands of europeans who arrived 400 years ago okay so this sequence of events is what would lead to the inception of the national day of mourning a day for indigenous peoples from around north and south america to come together and remember their ancestors who were killed at the hands of europeans who arrived 400 years ago i think some people may want to have a do-over okay uh i don't think they are buying into uh this make america great again uh it, it, they, they would ask a question of what period of time are you talking about america was great because they can they probably know some times when this land was great it's before 1620 before 1607 all right so this year 2020 on the 50th anniversary of the national day of mourning despite covid 19 concerns people uh gathered in plymouth massachusetts as they have done for the past 50 years on the day many americans will celebrate thanksgiving on, on the day many americans will celebrate thanksgiving the day after thanksgiving is also recognized as native american heritage day uh in november is native american heritage month okay so uh wamsada's uh wamsada frank james granddaughter keisha james told newsweek magazine quote a lot of people find the national day of mourning liberates the land we stand on a lot of people find the national day of mourning liberates the land we stand on it uh it's really the only day where a lot of people are forced to confront the pilgrim mythology and confront the ugliness of america and america's past okay it's really the only day and let me uh pull up the article here okay um it's really the only day where a lot of people are forced to confront the mythology the pilgrim mythology and confront the ugliness of america and america's past and it felt like this year as much as every other year if not more that was very important for us now keisha james the granddaughter of wamsada frank james who is created um the national day of mourning okay or at least helped create the national day of mourning uh, she is the archivist for the United American Indians of New England, the United American Indians of New England, which is an organization her grandfather started 50 years ago. 
both she and her grandfather are a part of the Wapanoag tribe of gay head Aquana, A-Q-U-I-N-N-A-H. She says that Native American communities have been hit hard during the coronavirus pandemic. So this year's March is also a chance to come together to share their experiences with the virus. In August of 2020, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC reported that COVID-19 was infecting American Indians and Alaska Natives up to 3.5 times more than white people. The CDC reported in August that COVID-19 was infecting Native Americans and Alaska Natives uh, up to 3.5 times, 3 .5 times more than white people. Quote, all of our communities have historically had diseases used against us. All of our communities have historically had diseases used against us, weaponized against us, uh, she told Newsweek. She went on to say, so there's also that added layer where we have Thanksgiving and there's a pandemic going on. And of course, the first Thanksgiving, uh, there was also an epidemic going on that was killing off Native peoples. That first Thanksgiving is November 16, 21. There was also an epidemic going on that was killing off Native peoples. Um, so each year, anywhere from 500 to 2,000 people gather for the Plymouth, Massachusetts, a site that has become closely associated with the Pilgrim's arrival. Keisha James explains that the Pilgrims actually arrived on what is now Cape Cod initially, and the story created around Plymouth Rock is a, quote, quantification of the Thanksgiving myth, okay, a quantification of the Thanksgiving myth, a further mistelling of the events that took place 400 years ago, she says. Okay, so uh, check out the rest of this article here from... Uh, Newsweek.com, 400 years after first Thanksgiving, Native Americans honor day of mourning instead. And uh, this article is from uh, November 25th, uh, 20, uh, November 25th, 2020. Okay. The day before Thanksgiving. Uh, this is from uh, Newsweek.com. You can check this out. We posted, a, 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 I think, three articles we posted dealing with the National Day of Thanks. That was one of them. There was one from, um, and uh, let me pull this. Let's flip back over to this here. Um, let's pull this one up here from Newsweek. I posted this on our Instagram page also, Michael M. Hotep on Instagram. I posted this picture uh, from the article. Okay, it's 400 years after first Thanksgiving, Native Americans honor day of mourning instead. Uh, this is by Alexandria Seanfield for uh, Newsweek.com. And uh, this picture here, this is... Um, depicting uh, in 1974 national day of mourning protesters uh reclaimed the wapanoag human remains that were being kept in the in the pilgrim hall museum in plymouth massachusetts native american uh native, native american wamsata, uh, wamsata frank james center is pictured carrying the box okay so that's a picture of him right there in the center All right. Then there was another article um, I posted dealing with the National Day of Mourning. Uh, this one was from the Boston Globe. This is a good one. Also, um, now Time Magazine, Time.com has an article 400 years after the first Thanksgiving. The tribe that fed the pilgrims continues to fight for its land amid another epidemic. 400 years after the first Thanksgiving, the tribe that fed the pilgrims 
continues to fight for its land amid another uh, epidemic. Okay, let me see. We'll try to pull that one up also. Uh, pull that one up from uh, time. I posted that one or not. That was one that I, um, was another article I looked at. But Boston Globe had a um, really good article that I read. Uh, Native American Thanksgiving protest draws thousands with virtual event. Native American Thanksgiving protest draws thousands with virtual event. In Plymouth, the, the National Day of Mourning observed the harm indigenous tribes suffered from settlers. OK, and this was one we posted on uh, our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network. There was also one from um, a few years ago, 2018, November 2018. There was one from um, news.yahoo.com that they picked up from the Associated Press. Native Americans mark Thanksgiving with day of mourning. Native Americans mark Thanksgiving with day of mourning. Okay, we'll give you that link as well. But very briefly, we look at the one from uh, Boston Globe. Uh, for the first time in half a century, thousands of people joined together. So this was from November 26, uh, 2025, 02 p.m. after the event took place. For the first time in uh, half a century, thousands of people joined together for the National Day of Mourning, both in person and virtually Thursday afternoon, underscoring the impact the pandemic has had on another longstanding tradition. In rainy, warm weather, dozens assembled in person by the statue of Massasoit, uh, who was the Native American chief there of the Wampanoag Nation, on Coles Hill, C-O-L-E apostrophe S, Coles Hill in Plymouth at noon to reflect on the origins of Thanksgiving. A live stream of the event hosted, hosted by the uh, United American Indians of New England was set up for people to participate from home. And then they talk about Keisha James as well. Keisha James, the uh, United American Indian, uh, Indians of New England youth coordinator, who is Aquana Wampanoag and Lakota, said the National Day of Mourning is a time to reflect on the injustices uh, Native Americans have faced since settlers arrived in America. She said, we have our own story to tell in our own way. We want to educate people so that they understand the stories we all learned in school about the first Thanksgiving are nothing but lies. Now, at its peak, nearly 1,600 people were, uh, were tuned in to the live stream. Hundreds of Native Americans have gathered annually for Thanksgiving Day protests since its founding in 1970, since the National Day of Mourning was founded in 1970. To Native Americans, the holiday is a reminder of millions of ancestors who died at the hands of European colonists over the past four centuries, organizers said. Uh, Keisha James says some Wampanoag ancestors did welcome pig pilgrims with open arms. And what do we get in return? Genocide, the theft of our lands, slavery and never ending oppression because Native Americans were enslaved also. OK, a lot of them are going to die from it. And, and it's, many of them are going to run away. And since they knew the land, they could it was easier for them to run away and escape. The Africans who were brought to this land largely is going to be harder in general for them to escape because they didn't know the land unless they had help. But Native Americans who are enslaved, they know the land. OK, the sound keeps going in and out. Uh, just a second here. Native Americans who know the land is it was easier for them to escape. OK, so let me see here. All right. Can you all hear me? OK.
All right, can y'all hear me okay? Um, let's continue here. So she said, what do we get in return? Genocide, the theft of our lands, slavery, and never ending oppression. Now in decades past, many stories about the origin of Thanksgiving have been corrected by indigenous educators across the state of Massachusetts with teachers and parents following suit. As part of a revamped education, every public school in the state of Massachusetts will receive copies of a new state history book co-written by Linda Coombs, C-O-O-M-B-S, a member of the Aquanaw Wapanog tribe. The book documents um, America long before the colonists arrived. The book documents America long before the colonists arrived. So I think, I guess that's, I, I, I think that's when they were talking about America was great because they weren't talking about America was great after the colonists get here for the most part at the protest Thursday organizers focused on the inequalities, the inequalities native Americans still face in the United States. For example, the Mosh P Wampanoag tribe lost its effort to establish a sovereign reservation in Taunton, T-A-U-N-T-O-N to build a casino after a federal judge ruled four years earlier that the U.S. government did not have the authority to confer the designation. Keisha James said, quote, 400 years after the arrival of the Mayflower, indigenous people are still denied the respect and the lands that are theirs by right. Change is, is long past due. Change is long past due. All right now, COVID-19 has also had a disproportionate impact on Native American communities, according to a study from the uh, from the CDC. Organizers also touched on the higher infant mortality rates and lower life expectancy among members uh, within uh, the indigenous uh, community. During her speech, uh, Matawin Monroe, M-A-H-T-O-W-I-N, Matawin Monroe, Monroe, uh, M-U-N-O-R, co-leader of the U-A-I-N-E, criticized state officials for not voting to redesign the state flag. State flag, criticized state officials for not voting to redesign the state flag, which, depict, which depicts an arm holding a sword over the head of a Native American. Okay, the Massachusetts state's uh, state flag depicts an arm holding a sword over uh, the head of a Native American. And let me see if we could pull this up here. Which one is this? This is uh, Boston Globe. Uh, not banning the use of Native American mascots and not changing the name of uh, Fanuel Hall, eight. F-A-N-E-U-I-L, uh, which is named after Peter, Peter Fanul, a merchant and slave trader. OK, uh, let's see here. We posted this article. Let me see if I can pull this up. That's the one. OK, this is the one from the Boston Globe. Um, my my uh Matawan Monroe said, quote, let us not forget this country was founded on white supremacy, the widespread practice of slavery and a policy of genocide and land theft. Let us not forget this country was founded on uh, white supremacy. The widespread practice of slavery. And a policy of land theft. OK, she's absolutely correct. Uh, let me, I want to scroll down here and let's look at, um, let me see if we can pull up the, okay. There's an article here about the state flag, WBUR.org. Um,
let's turn on the screen share. Native American groups protests use of, let me see, okay, let's turn this on here so you can see. Native American groups protest you protest use of indigenous figures in Massachusetts state seal as school mascots. Okay. That's an article from WBUR.org. Uh, that article is there's a link to this article in the one from the Boston Globe. All right, so check that out also. And if we go back to the one from the Boston Globe, let's see here. Okay, this is the one from the Boston Globe. Because um, it says, during her speech, uh, she criticized state officials for not voting to redesign a state flag, which depicts an arm holding a sword over the head of a Native American. And if we look at this article here from the Boston Globe, the one I just talked about, let's look at this one here. Okay, Native American Thanksgiving protest draws thousands with virtual event. Okay, this is from uh, bostonglobe.com. Here's a picture of it also. People marched in the Plymouth people marched in Plymouth while participating in the 50th anniversary of the National Day of Mourning. All right, let's see here. So check out this article here as well. All right, how's everybody doing? Okay, we got Janet and uh, Toy, uh, uh, Night Savior, uh, Say Night, uh, Ronald. How's everybody doing? All right, hey, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Then also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. So this really helps out being that we're here six days a week as opposed to just one day a week. Uh, this helps us uh, stay on the air, keep doing the research, keep broadcasting, uh, pay the bills. So because it's, um, it's tougher doing it six days a week. All right. Uh, and then also you can donate at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Um, Cash App is better than PayPal, but if you want to do PayPal, that's fine. You can also set up for a recurrent donation through PayPal if you want to as well. All right. Let me see. Did, did, did I get to all the articles I want to get to? Um, I think I got to that. There was one from that we posted earlier. Uh, this was from a couple of years. This is from 2018. We posted this one as well um, on Thanksgiving Day. Native Americans mark Thanksgiving with Day of Mourning. This is from the Associated Press. Native Americans mark Thanksgiving with Day of Mourning. This is from 2018. 2018. There's a little video in there uh, also. So we'll post that link here as well. All right. So we see how um, some, of this, some of this history overlaps with African-American history. And you have African-Americans who have Native American. Some of us have Native American ancestry as well. There were some Native Americans who were enslaved. Now, the majority of those who were enslaved in this land are going to be people of African descent. But you're going to have Native Americans who were enslaved uh, also. Um, and let me see. There was also an article from usatoday.com. After a summer of racial reckoning. Is America ready to learn the truth about Thanksgiving? This is from November 23rd, 2020. After a summer of racial reckoning, is America ready to learn the truth about Thanksgiving? This is by Aaron Dion for uh, USA Today. And was there a, uh, there was one that I pulled up here. Okay. Wasn't there one that I 
Okay, I think this was right here. This is okay. This is from the heel.com. There was one we pulled up. Um, Four hundred years after the first Thanksgiving tribe that fed the pilgrims fights for survival. Okay, uh, that was another one. That's from the heel.com. So was this? Um, let's turn on the screen share. We'll show you this one. I guess. Can't remember was this one I posted or what? Where I just saw it. Where is? Yeah, four hundred years after arrival, the first four hundred years after first Thanksgiving tribe that fed the pilgrims fights for survival. Okay, um, this is from the Hill .com. As you gather around the table, know your history. As you gather around the table, know your history. So this is dealing with the Wampanoag. Across the country, indigenous Americans are fighting for their women, health, and land. This Thanksgiving, the Moshpee Wampanoag tribe is hoping to educate the public on the history of the holiday. The, uh, the tribe is one of several currently under lockdown during the COVID, uh, uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. Okay, in this article, yeah, from November, 25th, 2020. So check out this article also from the hill.com 400 years after first Thanksgiving tribe that fed the pilgrims fights for survival. All right. So look, Hey, that's going to do it for us. Visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. You know, we have the bundle pack, the Africans who were here before Columbus, the Africans who were here before Columbus bundle pack. And it includes a double lecture. I did with Dr. David M. Hotel, uh, who wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. It, it did, uh, also has a, a double lecture I did with Professor Kaba uh, Hiawatha Kamene dealing with the ancient African presence in the Americas. Um, there's um, also a lecture that I did, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust. There's one from Dr. John Henry Clark, also one from Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, then when they came before Columbus. So it was an eight DVD bundle pack. The Africans who were here before Columbus, the Africans who were here before Columbus, it's at um, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, okay? Uh, so you can order that today. We have orders shipping out uh, this week. All right, look, we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you Sunday night. Peace.